stuff all repaired and have returned to the second stage of the Tower of Latria. Welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Alright, Mr. Gargoyle, if you don't want to fight, neither do I. challenging than it was before, especially in regards to distracting us from this gargoyle who is definitely more of a threat to us than the centipedes. slots in order. With the heart nothing more than a heaping pile at the bottom of the tower now, our path to this narrow rounding staircase is open as well.
8 Old Spice. Now that's a looting experience I can appreciate. I'm going to predominantly be using magic in this encounter, so I'll be filling up my MP after switching and receiving the bonus from the Silver Catalyst before heading inside. We've been long acquainted, so I'm willing to part. Nice stuff, eh? <laughs> Come again. Then I'll be awaiting. Thou seek a then we haven't even fully completed two worlds and levels are already pretty dang costly. I'm going to spend a few more soul items just to get a few more level ups into vitality for more survivability. Also, it makes our HP and MP bar somewhat equal when I don't have the silver catalyst out and that's always satisfying to look at. Soul of the mind, key to life's ether. Art thou done? Me.
but perhaps I... Let's check out the archstone of the demon man-eater. Masses of flesh litter these hanging prisons. Latria's current master, an old man who is no longer human, has been creating his own demons. This next boss encounter is truly special. I mean, it won't be for us, sadly, but I'll explain once we load in and see a cutscene. Is our man in golden garb, the one we've heard so much about. To explain what makes this encounter special, if a player tries to invade another player, or even places a co-op summon sign down while in online mode in any section of World 3, they have the chance to be summoned as another player's final World 3 boss. And there's no restrictions on that, they have access to all of their items, weapons, spells, and what have you, literally everything. The only difference is that they're equipped with the monk's head collar armor piece. Though it's purely cosmetic during the fight itself, the summoned player has a chance of obtaining it if they successfully defeat the host player, and it increases spell strength. This whole idea is really cool, and I'm sad that they never did anything even remotely similar with the Dark Souls games. I suppose the Looking Glass Knight in Dark Souls 2 attempted to, but relegating the PvP aspect to New Game Plus and onward was a mistake, I feel. But this is Demon Souls, so let's get back to that. said and done, I must remind you with a heavy heart that we are playing offline, and this is really just a nothing fight when that's the case. So instead of talking about the fight itself, I'm going to share a little anecdote related to it. My most recent playthrough, that is to say the one I did before coming back to it for this playthrough, was a purely co-op run with my boyfriend who had played Dark Souls 1 and 2 and Bloodborne, but was playing Demon Souls for the first time. As I am wont to do, I made sure to let his playthrough be as blind as I could possibly manage. Our world order was a little bit all over the place, but we still went through World 3 relatively early. Anyway, after each boss, he would typically wait for me to place my summon sign down, but after beating man-eaters, he decided to take a look at the area ahead before he summoned me. I heard him say, oh wow, a fog gate appeared right behind me, and then, oh, a cutscene. 
Whoops. So at this point, I'm trying my damnedest to hide my smile and keep from laughing because I'm just so excited that he's able to even experience the mechanic for the old monk fight so many years after the game has left its prime. After the cutscene finished, he gave a sarcastic, oh no, I got invaded. Apparently, the person who was summoned as his old monk fight had the word guardian in his PSN ID, so he just assumed that it was a scripted invasion, much like you'd see in Dark Souls, and that the NPC's name was just something something guardian. So he makes his way up the stairs and heads through the fog gate, and the first thing he says is, Aw, he bowed to me. I'm not gonna bow back, though, because that'd just be stupid. He then engaged him and won, none the wiser. When I told him that he had just beaten another player and explained the mechanics of the boss, he was pretty obviously surprised, and said that had he known it was another player, he probably would have been a lot more stressed out. There's not much to the story, but it's an extremely happy memory with this game for me, and I'm especially pleased by how recent it is. The demon was destroyed, and World 3 now is finished. Imagery of these hundreds and hundreds of chairs is really memorable. Not sure where the old man's dead body went, but that's fine. I don't really mind not knowing the answer to that. Seek of the soul of the mind, key to life's ether. Art thou done? Main thine. Thou seek the. I hate leaving stats at odd numbers when they're so close to an increment of ten. You have your wits about you. Surely you understand. The Yellow Demon Soul gives us what is arguably one of the most overpowered magic spells in the game, which also happens to be my favorite, and that is Homing Soul Arrow. It basically replicates the spell that the boss would cast, where it places three orbs around you that go after a target once you get close to it and deal devastating damage to enemies with low magic resistance. Bring me more, demon. I patiently await you. You have your wits about you. We were wrong to assume that only demons could do demon work. He has power. We were wrong to assume... Where are you going? You have your wits. I am... soul form and then call it for this video. Thanks a lot. In the next one, I'll be covering World 3's White World Tendency events, which are a marked improvement over World 2's.